I'm about to show you the only workflow you're going to need as a graphic designer. And I'm going to break it down into five really easy to understand steps for this process. The first step in this process asks you to do something that not many designers are going to tell you, but it's absolutely essential. You need to have empathy. Consider this. Take a Lego project for a financial company. Empathizing with their target audience, you choose blue for trust and reliability, and you incorporate a shield and an eagle for strength and security. These choices and these concepts, they can only be arrived at with initial empathy. But it's not just about symbolism. It's about a subtle idea being expressed through the logo as well. Those horizontal lines that you can see on the logo, they're not just aesthetic choices. They're deliberate design elements meant to evoke a sense of calmness and stability. It's shape psychology. The empathy-driven approach distinguishes a mere logo from a powerful brand symbol, fostering trust and a connection amidst uncertainty. Understanding the needs and the emotions of both audience and client isn't just design. It's the key to building a connection with a client and the audience through every single pixel. This brings us on to the next step. Transitioning from empathy to defining problems and goals is pivotal to any design project, especially in corporate branding for startups. So imagine a new company is eager to carve its niche in a competitive market. To begin, it's imperative to immerse oneself as a designer in their world. You need to understand their audience, the industry dynamics and the competitors. So you need to take the empathy from the first step and what kind of things you realized from that step and then realize or understand some problems for your project in regard to the empathy. And when you know these problems, you can make some goals that you need to achieve with your design. So for this new branding startup, we might ask if the challenge here is going to be gaining credibility in the industry because they're going to be totally new as a company. Maybe they will need to stand out amidst the noise. Or perhaps it's going to be about forging an emotional connection with our customers. Now I designed this logo for a financial company. So the problems or the challenges on this project were the design needed to appeal to a young but also an old audience. It had to be modern while still appearing somewhat traditional. And that can be a challenge. So I went for a shield to evoke protection. And this is also an established reified traditional element. But I incorporated that in a minimal and a modern kind of way. The eagle wings also have been created and refined in a minimal manner as well. With the problems fully realized, you can then create goals to achieve which would actually create a success roadmap for your graphic design. These objectives could range from creating a memorable logo that encapsulates the brand's essence to developing a comprehensive brand guideline that maintains consistency across different platforms. Now, I get a lot of comments asking me, how do I edit my videos or what tools do I use to make my videos? Well, lately, one tool I've been experimenting with and which I've seen some awesome new updates for is Filmora. One huge headache involved with video editing is the sheer amount of time it takes. With Filmora, however, we now have a bunch of AI tools that save us a lot of time. Things like AI music generator, AI text to video, which is simply mind blowing. You type in what tasks need to be done and away it goes. Things have been ramped up a few notches with Filmora, that's for sure. Now there are many assets to make use of and to create stunning videos. Things like video effects and templates, again, which just simply save a lot of time. It really allows you to get creative while not spending all day sat at an editing desk, which I just love. Another really great thing is that Filmora is available on both Windows and Mac. But get this, it's also on Android and iOS as well. So if you want to see what this cutting edge video editing tool can do for you, just click the link in the description box below and try out Filmora today. So moving from problems and goal setting to generating creative solutions is the next important step. Now we've all heard of things like brainstorming and ideation sessions. This is where designers unleash a torrent of ideas, keywords, and concepts. Yes, and these do work well, but there is another really interesting and useful way to make design concepts I'm gonna show you right now. Now I'm talking about reverse brainstorming. Instead of brainstorming ideas to solve a design problem, try and brainstorm potential ways to cause problems for your design projects. Now I know this sounds crazy, but hear me out. 
A perfect example of this is, let's say a graphic designer is tasked to make a website for an organization. Here, the designer can reverse brainstorm ways to confuse, frustrate, or overwhelm the website visitors. And this might create concepts that go against those ideas. In doing so, the designer identifies areas for improvement and develops user-friendly design solutions, simply because they brainstorm ways to confuse the website audience. Pretty cool. Now I must say, however, there are many ways to create concepts and a designer should always be aware of multiple different methods and you should try and see what works best for you. This radical way of thinking completely shatters the assumptions and basic thinking and it opens the door for new creativity and new concepts and that in turn can appeal to the audience in a very different way. In this phase, creativity knows no bounds. It's about getting unfamiliar and getting uncomfortable. But make sure that your ideas aim to solve the problems and the goals from step two. That is super, super important. But by encouraging wild ideas and unconventional thinking, designers unearth gems hidden beneath the surface, transforming challenges into opportunities and paving the way for groundbreaking design solutions. So in step four, we see things evolve from the ideation into the actual design concept phase. This is where designers take ideas and polish them up into actual functional working concepts. Now consider the redesign of a trendy Japanese sushi bar. You could brainstorm concepts such as enhancing customer experience and reflecting the restaurant's unique cuisine and culture. And this could be distilled into refined ideas that align with the establishment's identity and their goals. So some concepts for the menu might be hand-drawn Japanese illustrations or perhaps even a zen inspired style menu and so on. While doing this, it is very important to keep in mind the previous steps that we talked about, especially the goals and the achievements that you need to work into your design. For example, some of the goals for the menu of the sushi bar might have been to create an easy to read and minimal menu design. And this is so the customers don't become confused or swamped with too much information and the menu appears minimal and sophisticated. With that in mind, on screen, only one concept design would work for this project. This concept process ensures that every design decision serves a purpose. And this results in the menu that is not only showcasing dishes, but also enhances the overall dining experience, enticing customers and fostering a memorable impression of the restaurant's culture. But the concepts are not the final stage. We actually need to head into stage five, which is where you refine those concepts into final design solutions. Designers here should evaluate each concept alignment if it's actually with the sushi bar's identity and the goals. You need to prioritize those that effectively communicate its unique offerings and resonate with the target audience. Visual refinement follows, and that's with careful selection of typography, color palettes, and imagery to convey the desired tone and atmosphere. Typography choices reflect the restaurant's style, the color palettes evoke the ambience, and imagery acts to entice diners with appetizing visuals. Layout compositions are fine-tuned for clarity and coherence, guiding diners seamlessly through the menu while highlighting key dishes. Through this meticulous process, each refined concept evolves into a polished design that not only reflects a restaurant's identity, but also enhances the overall dining experience, enticing customers to indulge in their journey at this restaurant. Now, if you've gotten this far in today's video, kudos to you because you're going to be rewarded with something free to download in regard to everything we've seen in today's video. Now, I've made a brief PDF that shows you or takes you through the process we've talked about in today's tutorial. However, if you just pick it up and read it, it's not going to make much sense or it won't be that helpful unless you do understand everything we've talked about in today's video. The free PDF is kind of like a reminder for the process and you can always come back to this video to just make things a bit more clearer on what the steps actually entail and that is linked in the description box below but if you want to enhance your skills as a graphic designer just click that video on screen but until next time guys design your future today peace